Hey everyone, this is Ross. In today's video, I'm gonna have a really comprehensive guide for you guys that you can follow along for preparing your container fig trees for the winter time. Uh, I have a lot of steps here that I wanna show you guys, a lot of things that I'm personally doing, and I, you don't have to do all these different steps, but I highly recommend that you do. Um, the first step here was really simple. We just wanted to get our fig tree dormant. All these trees here on the patio, um, there's close to probably a hundred different pots. We needed to get these things hit by a certain cold, a certain frost, that hard frost that was gonna come in. We had one earlier about two to three weeks ago that was 24 degrees Fahrenheit. That knocked off a lot of these leaves or set them onto that dormancy state. Then we had a, a couple days later, a 21 and a 20 degree low here. And between those three days, we lost all of our leaves. Um, and it really is setting these trees into that dormancy process where the sap flow is going down from the top of the plant, down into the wood, into the trunk, and then down into the roots of the tree. And once all, those, all that sap flow, all that carbohydrates is then stored back into the roots, our tree is in dormancy. And now that our tree is in dormancy, and we're going to be having some pretty good lows coming up, you know. Um, these container fig trees, I've talked about it in the past quite a bit, is that they can really handle temperatures around 15 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's for their roots. The roots are about hardy to 15 degrees. The wood, if you have hardened up wood, that's a totally different temperature. But I had some green growth, very little bit of green growth on some of these trees. Growth that was put on too late in the season. And that frost that came in, that 24 degree low, the 20 degree low, that came in and killed some of that green, very fragile growth. It wasn't gonna do anything anyway for us. Um, but for the most part, this wood can survive at least 15. Most of them will survive about 10. Some of them can survive five, and uh, very few of them will survive zero degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and the roots will die most of the roots on these trees will die around 15 degrees Fahrenheit. When you start getting a little bit lower than that, you're really putting yourself in danger. So what we need to do, because now that we live and we know that those temperatures are dangerous for our trees, we need to bring our trees into a place that is uh, conducive, that's gonna keep these guys warm throughout the wintertime. Even when it's zero degrees Fahrenheit, these guys have to be kept up above 15 degrees Fahrenheit at a minimum. Um, I'm gonna show you guys this whole process of me taking all these trees, moving them into storage, talking about storage in another video that we're gonna do. This is more about prepping these, uh, what we're doing right now to get them ready to be put into storage. I'm doing this all really today um, and tomorrow. So right now, now that our tree is dormant, we were able to prune it. And we did videos on pruning. You can see some of these limbs here have got some, some cuts on them. This, this thing's pretty tall. What you need to consider when pruning is the height of your tree for your storage area. Sometimes you guys just might have a really small garage or a small greenhouse and you can't fit such a big tree. So you need to prune it back a bit. Uh, but pruning is the number one thing here. And then after we do the pruning, we need to get ourselves some soil and some fertilizer. This is what I personally recommend doing, is that if you guys have a lack of soil at the top of these pots, I'd recommend laying on some soil. This is just mushroom compost. You can also do worm castings, right? It doesn't matter um, on the top layer here how well draining it is. I think uh, adding some excess, some extra organic material, some extra, um, you know, nutrients is really gonna go a long way and this mushroom compost and also worm castings would do really well for that. We're just kinda top dressing all these pots. And you can do this now, even though the trees aren't growing, we can still fertilize them now. And this is something that I, I use here. This is a, an inorganic fertilizer, it's called uh, Jax. Actually, this is my synthetic, <laughs> so we can't use this. Or this is uh, the liquid fertilizer, we can't use that. But uh, normally I use these beads. 
that's kind of like Osmocote. For those of you guys who've used Osmocote and gotten that from Home Depot, you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, there's like these little beads here. In fact, I can take some out of some of these pots. They still have these beads in them. And this is what I, I didn't fertilize at all with this year, but you can maybe make this out. There's like these little beads here in my hand. Oh, we just dropped them all. But you guys can kind of get the gist is that those beads will, when the right temperature is activating them, when it's warm outside, and also when the water is hitting those beads, it's then extracting some fertilizer over time. It's a, a slow release fertilizer. If you were to put these beads here on the pot right now, which I, I'm tempted to do, um, all winter time, they wouldn't be giving the trees any fertilizer, just not how it works. They're just sitting there pretty much inactive. And then when the tree wakes up and things really warm up and we water our trees in, then that fertilizer process begins. But it's not really until that point that really they're getting any sort of, uh, any sort of fertilizer there. Um, so it's good to do this now, I think, because the reason I wanna do this now is that some of these trees, the trees behind me are gonna go in the greenhouse. And when we stack these things up in the greenhouse, um, cause we don't have a, lo a large greenhouse, we need to put them on top of each other and we need to stack them maybe two or three pots high. It's very difficult to get in there and water all these trees. Um, it's very difficult to fertilize all these trees. So uh, what I need to do is I think, I think it's a good idea this year to actually feed some of these, just a, a little bit of fertilizer, not a lot, just enough to give them a little bit of a boost in the greenhouse so that when they come out of the greenhouse, they're already really well fed. And then I can then feed all the trees in May. That's what I do. I feed them all in May four times with a liquid fertilizer, which is this right here, this liquid stuff. Um, and then that's their feeding for the year. That's it. We cut it off at that point. But before May, I waked all these trees up in the greenhouse. I waked them up in March, around March 15th. So I have about a month and a half in the greenhouse where these trees are awake and not getting any food. And they need food. And it's really important in the beginning of the season to really give them an, enough food. So I think it's a good idea right now, at least in my particular situation, just give them a little bit of these, uh, this Osmocote. Um, you know, a little bit of that slow release synthetic fertilizer. You can also add in organic fertilizer right now. And in fact, this is probably the best time to be doing that uh, because your organic fertilizer needs to break down. If it's not breaking down, um, it's not an instant thing. So it has to take at least a month or two, depending on the temperature, depending on the conditions. Um, you may even have some organic fertilizer you put down now and in the spring, it's still not really doing anything for you until it breaks down. So uh, I think right now is a good idea to do that because you need that process. Like I said, you need that one or two month window for it to do anything anyway. So might as well put it down now. In addition to the, the worm castings in the soil, and that's just topping it all off. And then what I'm doing here, I have a literally a bucket of mulch this bucket of mulch is what I've been using. Um, I took off all of this in the spring. I did a video on that for you guys because the reason I, I like to put the mulch on now, and this is just a good mixture of different types of mulch, leaves, wood chips, rice holes. There's some, um, probably some diatomaceous earth in here. There's even some fertilizer, maybe even some micronutrients in here. This is not really, the key to this though is the mulch. I want to just have a covering on top of these pots. And I want to do this for every single tree that I put in storage. And here's the big purpose, the whole reason for this is that these trees can dry out in the winter time. If we add a level of mulch, a couple inches of mulch here, we're then preventing a lot of that water from evaporating out of the pot during the dormancy process. And I don't have to water these guys at all throughout the dormancy process. Sometime in, in March when these trees wake up, excuse me guys, I'm going to have to uh, start watering them. But from now, which is the end of November, all the way through March and even April with some of these trees here that won't wake up till about April 15th, 
Um, I don't have to water them one little bit. And a lot of you guys give me questions all the time. How much should I water my tree? How much should I water my tree? Well, if you guys put on a, not a lot of mulch and you water it in well before we put it into storage, you're not going to have to water it all winter time. And it does depend on your storage conditions. Like if your storage condition is really dry, maybe you have a really dry garage, maybe you have a dry basement, I don't know. But if you have a drier environment, a lot of that water is going to evaporate quicker. So you're going to need probably to water these, but a very minimal amount. Personally, I don't have to do it. I can get away with it. Large trees, healthy trees with big root systems with lots of soil and mulch on top. I don't have to water them at all. These little pots, you know, the four by nine size, the one gallon pots, um, I did water those last year and I recommend watering those smaller, those smaller pots. But if you add in mulch even on top of those little pots, it's really gonna go a long way. Um, so that's a big thing I do is put the mulch on top. The next thing we're gonna do is we have a horticultural oil here and I have a sprayer that you can use. Get yourself a horticultural oil, some kind of uh, neem or some kind of, um, you know, like an insecticide of some kind. That's like a soap. You know, I would recommend either an oil, a soap or neem. And the reason for this is that this stuff's going to, when we spray our trees, this is kind of going to act as like a dormant oil. And it's a really big recommendation for all fruit trees, guys, is to use this or some sort of dormant oil. This one's all year round. I can do this at any time of the year. But by putting a dormant oil onto your tree, you're smothering all those pests. And the fig tree doesn't have many pests, guys. There's very little things that really bother the, the tree itself. Um, However, it's a really good idea to use this because there's a lot of overwintering, very small, you cannot really even see them sometimes, particularly scale. And I've struggled with scale in the past. You spray your trees with this stuff, it covers the branches with that oil and smothers the scale. And then the scale numbers significantly decrease the following year. You won't really have a scale issue. If you do, it's very minimal and uh, you won't have to worry about it. Scale is a serious thing with figs. Totally recommend you guys use that. Um, so once we've sprayed them, uh, once we've put the soil on top and the mulch on top and maybe even some fertilizer, the fertilizer is only gonna go on the trees that go on the greenhouse, by the way. Now we move them into storage. That's really it. This is, there's nothing really else to this. Um, these are some standard steps that I think a lot of people will overlook and not really um, consider. Not many people are talking about this in their particular videos that, that are being done. Um, what I would recommend is that when we get these things in the storage, we water them in. Um, if you can't get a water source to these trees, water them in here and then bring them to your storage area. The issue with that is then they become very heavy with the, all that excess water in there. But we want to water them in really well before we put them away. And um, if you do everything I mentioned here, you guys are going to be rolling. The, the dormancy process is going to be a joke. The beginning of your season is going to be off to a great start. Um, you're going to have great success. So I'm going to do this all right now today. And then I'm going to put these guys away probably tomorrow, uh, maybe a little bit later today. And... Um, yeah, we'll catch you for tomorrow's video, guys. Uh, thank you for watching this one. If you're interested, follow us on FigBid or FigBoss. Sorry, guys, FigBoss.com, and uh, f check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, we post all kinds of different things. If you're interested in cuttings and plants, all that will be notified on there. And uh, we like to post all interesting and different kind of content on those two different places. So uh, check us out again on the blog and on social media. Subscribe. Take care, everyone. We'll see you for tomorrow's video.